got our kit consisting of um, consisting of two debt twos, a uh, set of leads, two leads which span 300 meters total. So we're getting uh, probe spacings up to 100, 100 meters. We've got multiple copper rods. Uh, in this case, because we're sitting on um, granite. <coughs> We want to be able to get as maximise the contact with the surface layer as possible, so that we can get <coughs> good return signal. Often you won't get a chance to uh, take soundings directly on uh, construction sites because it's too busy. There's too much, too much plant, too many risks, and uh, the ground itself is probably made up, so it's of little real value because it's all kind of imported. So hunt out. In this case, we've got a little bit Ray Mears. If you're not familiar with Ray Mears, he's a survival expert. But anyway, we've got a little bit Ray Mears outside of the uh, construction site to find um, a place that has been undisturbed. And here we are in the forest. Um, we've just laid out the pins, pr first pin and deployed leads. Uh, first pin is about, I don't know, 10 inches apart spacing. This, this sets the trend uh, for the analysis later on. And it's really important that you get a, a close spacing first of all, just to uh, see where the tipping point is for the layerization. So, um, next phase is to really get uh, the spacings out, out uh, to about 54 to 100 meter uh, intervals. So, we're on about a 300 meter run into the forest. Right, we're using multiple probes to increase the surface contact with the uh, the, the signal and the sounding, um, so we get a good return and more reliable results. Basically, this is what they look like. Yeah, for, that's the potential probe on one side, and we've got three probes on the other. Um, the mold grips are just there because that's practically what we had uh, available. But just give you an idea. We're using um, copper probes driven to about three inches, four inches deep uh, with multiple stack connectors on, which then go into the leads. I can show you. These particular leads have seen a bit of action. Anyway, it just gives you an idea of what uh, what we're doing, and because of the multiple um, on the current signals, especially <coughs> multiple probes, they allow better connection. So you've effectively got a much bigger probe um, area in contact, sends a, a decent signal through for the instrument to pick up. That's the theory. If I can get you in focus, there you go. All good. Fifty one point eight. Fifty one point eight. Mark that off against the probe spacing, and then what happens then is that uh, that's the raw uh, reading. It then gets processed, um, software processed, to actually give the uh, correct apparent reading. And this we repeat numerous soundings up to sort of three hundred meter spacing sometimes. So uh, it can be quite a time consuming uh, activity. A really useful tip for the modelling side of soil resistivity is to get um, the immediate surface layer uh, tested and sounded, which means probe spacings typically I don't know, four, six inches apart. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, this is just to set the trend on when it comes to the analysis side of things. So, a useful tip get that in. It may not form part of the formal. Uh, report, but um, it does set the the scene for the uh, the uh, model analysis. Improve the connection on the signal. 
and slightly at an angle as well so you've got more surface contact.